Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm going to recommend some of the British English comedies that I like the most. And the reason I thought you'd be interested in this video is because um, you might have a few laughs if you manage to watch any of these, but also by watching some of these, you might be able to get a, a wider understanding of British or English culture. Now, that being said, I understand that comedy isn't always something that um, translates very well. And uh, even if we understand the language, doesn't mean that we get the joke. So I don't know what you'll be able to um, find funny in any of these. Uh, find um, If you'll find the humour that funny. But even if you don't, it might be a recommendation just to... Um, dip in have a little look or watch a few clips so i think all of these things were, are good things that you've at least heard of um some of these are my personal uh, comedy favorites but also there are a lot more different comedies i like but i had to um pick ones that i thought were a mix between funny worth watching and good for you to know in terms of introducing you to some british comedy Okay, so I'm going to start with one of my favourites. This one is uh, called Extras. And if I summarise it, the situation of the comedy is that we've got this character, Andy Millman, who's played by Ricky Gervais, you probably know. And he is an extra on film sets. An extra is someone who's there in the background who um, usually just wears a costume but doesn't have any lines to speak. And um, part of the situation here is that a lot of the extras, they, they, they're doing that kind of work because they want to be an actor. And so in this situation, Andy Millman he's full of ambition and he wants to be somebody he wants to be successful um but something always seems to get in the way his ambitions are thwarted or he never gets as far as he would like so this was a lot of frustration and situations always happen to uh, pull him back and ruin all of the really good chances that he gets and a lot of the time he's brought down by his uh, closest closest friends, um, which is a, a woman uh, called Maggie. Um, she's always putting putting her foot in it and saying the wrong thing. Or his uh, agent, uh, played by Stephen Merchant, who co-wrote the series. He's he's useless. He's a useless agent who, in that in that way, is is um, ruining things for Andy. So why why this is uh, funny to me is that, you know, no matter how hard Andy's trying to get on in his life and be, and be somebody, there's a limit to what he can achieve. And we see his character develop through the whole series. So he, he goes from a nobody to getting some fame, but the fame going to his head then so he becomes he becomes uh, unlikable as as he's changing throughout the series and um what another thing which i really like like about this is each episode stands on its own as it has its own story arc and we get uh, guest appearances by really famous british celebrity celebrities uh, we've got david bowie We've got um, George Michael, Kate Winslet, just to name a few, Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter actor. And the reason their appearances are just so brilliant and funny is because these are, um, especially at the time this was created, you know, the, the top, top A-list actors in, in the UK. And um, it's just impressive that they've appeared in this uh, TV series playing themselves but not really, because there's always something really exaggerated about their um, character. So, um, yeah, I, I like I like it for all those reasons. And also, I just think it's it's a lot of love went into this and it was really well written 
as a series with a, with a story that goes somewhere. So I think it has an aspect to it that even though it's comedy, it's it's art as a comedy. So you can you, there are moments that give you uh, pause to reflect and think about things in there. So it works on different levels. Definitely recommend this. Okay, let's move on to the next one I want to talk about. Faulty Towers. Let me take a sip of my tea one moment. You've probably heard of this one. Because this is a classic British comedy, much loved and very well known. Um, the story revolves around a hotel um, in, in Torquay, in the seaside village of England. And the hotel is managed by Basil Fawlty and uh, his wife. And these are uh, two uh, staff members who work in the hotel. And um, the reason why this is funny is because, again, Basil, Basil Fawlty is um, an ambitious man in a sense, but I think it's more, more appropriate here to say he's a social climber. His class would be probably uh, lower, lower middle class, but he only seems to like anyone of a higher social class than he is. He'll, he'll, look, up, he'll look up to them, he'll do anything for them as long as they're above him and he fawns on them and treats them very respectfully. But anyone else he judges um, as beneath him, he, uh, he just uh, treats really meanly actually, and he can be really insulting. So um, he's someone that, he's not ambitious, he just wants to, he, he wants to be higher up than he is. But the comedy comes from the fact he never manages to achieve that. He's always trying to be something bigger or more important than he is. He's trying to achieve too much and he's trying to go too far. And I think from the perspective of comedy, why this is actually so, so perfect, maybe even in a, a classical sense of uh, comedy, is that it follows rules of farce. One, one thing, uh, one thing happens and then it starts everything else going wrong. The mistake always gets bigger. They always try to they always try to hide something that went wrong, but then that makes it worse later on. And also an aspect to farce, which it has, is that this this comedy uh, depends on the timing of everything that's uh, happening. And I can't think of any comedy that does it so perfectly. And it also reminds me um, of a play, in a sense. Uh, we're, we're watching this as something recorded for television, but it just seems to to work almost as if it's we're almost if it's on stage and we're watching it. And um, yeah, so I think going back to the characters themselves, this this is a good example of a British class comedy. We've got we've got the characters at different at different levels in here and um yeah um definitely definitely recommend watching this this was created in the uh, mid 70s so you you'll probably depending on how old you are you probably will find it um challenging in the sense of of it being a vintage comedy now. And the England that is represented in this is very, very different to the one we live in, in today. But I, I think because on a, on the level of, of you know, how, how perfectly this was created as a, as a piece of comedy, you should be able to watch it and understand. And I also think in terms of someone who's learning English or, is not a native speaker you'll be able to understand the accents i would say because there's quite a lot of rp in this so it's perhaps more approachable to watch than some of the other recommendations i've got 
so let's move on this is going to be very very hard for me to describe what it is but I'll do my best and this is one of my favorites as well it's called the League of Gentlemen I'm going to turn the DVD around so you can see the characters just take a look um, so we have three actors they're the League of Gentlemen and um, their names their real life names are Reese Shearsmith Steve Pimbleton and Mark Gat Gat Gattis and they play all the not all but most of the different characters that appear in this series and it's set in a village in the north north of England and this village is an out of the way place uh, not exposed to the modern wor world and because of that you've got all these sort of uh, strange and un unusual characters living there and it's a very surreal sort of comedy um stra strange strange and incredible things happen in it and it, it's definitely not it's not subtle um because the, the characters are really so so strange so out there um they can and they vary a bit so sometimes they can be really disgusting sometimes they can be really tyrannical as in the sense of you know dominating and it, like i said i'm really struggling to find words to explain it because it is quite quite unique but also full of full of charm and um, i think it's one of those things the more you watch the more you love it it's got it's got um brilliant catch catchphrases or lines in it things that st stick in your head and um what else can i say about it um yeah because it's we've got this um Royston Vasey, come, you'll you'll never leave. Uh, that's I think that's there to evoke the sense of you know it's a, it's a small it's a small town small town sort of uh, place, and I also think from the artistic point of view, as, as I might I don't want to say too much about this because I haven't researched it, but the three um, actors who created this, they um, they are they they they're trained as actors but also in in creating drama so th this has got the um art artistic ambition behind it as well i would say um it, so it's not it's not just about jokes they had a they had a, they they wrote this in a way that was to um you know, make something of note i would say but like i said i haven't researched it that's just uh, my impression of of this um it is so surreal and so off the wall that you might be sometimes thinking i don't get the joke i don't get the joke if you watch that and um i think if that's the case that might be the case that might just be that this comedy doesn't translate very well but i would recommend at least having a look and i would also say you need to watch more than just a random YouTube clip you'd probably need to watch a whole episode to find out if this was your cup of tea or not oh yeah I also there's one more thing I wanted to say is I, I really like this humor because I think in order to be able to write it you need a, a sort of misanthropic view of the world and view of view of people um, um, which I think, which is a certain a certain way of looking at the world, but it can be it can be funny. So I recommend that. The next one is not one of my favourites, but I think it's worth watching and it's worth knowing about. And you should challenge yourself by watching this if you have never watched it before. So I've only watched these episodes once, and I haven't. Uh, I got this six months ago or something before I'd heard of it 
but never watched because it was before my time, 1983. But also, it's, this is not something anyone in my family would have watched. And the reason is because this sort of comedy, I would say, in my opinion, is quite highbrow. And I think in order to be able to have understood this, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments if you lived through this and I've got the wrong perception of this. But this is for middle class people or univer university educated people because there's so many highbrow references in this that I think it wouldn't be that under understood um, for, what, what do you say, like working class people or, or the, the common folk, it wasn't really made for them. So let me try to explain what it is, another very difficult one to explain. This comedy is set in, in different eras of British uh, history. So for example, an era that sticks in my head is in, in the time of um, Queen Elizabeth I. So that particular uh, series will be set in that time. And the actors who play, play the different roles in this, they appear in every different series, but they play different people and the time period changes. Now, I think even if you struggle with the humour, struggle to understand, um, you'll, you'll, you'll still be very impressed by it because it's, it's so incredibly British due to that different uh, historical kind of travelling that we do through different periods of um, English history. I would say the humour in this is quite intellectual, um, but we also have um, traditional comedy elements in there or, or, or things you would expect in a, in a comedy. For example, fooled characters who just make you laugh because they're, they're a bit silly and that kind of thing. So it's not all highbrow. Um, but there are definitely things in it that are hard to get, hard to understand. I'm very, very, very struggling to, to say more about it, probably because I've only seen it once. And I'd say it varies a lot. Some episodes I really laughed out loud a lot. I loved them, thought they were brilliant. And other ones from other seasons perhaps were a bit more of a drag for me. Um, the main, um, main actor is Rowan Atkinson. Um, you, if you've heard of him, you probably know him more from playing Mr. Bean. So he tends to play the complete opposite sort of character to Mr. Bean in all of, in all of these. Cause he, he usually plays a very, very, uh, very cynical, um, um, yeah, very, very cynical character in this and very intelligent as well. So sort of the opposite of his Mr. Bean end. Um, yes, check that out. And the last comedy that I want to give a mention to is called Harry and Paul. This is a, a sketch show series. We've got two actors. We've got um, Harry Enfield and Paul Whitehouse. And they play lots and lots and lots and lots of different characters in, in different sketches. They also have other other actresses um, who join them, actresses who join them to play different roles. And um, I would say this is a class humour uh, type comedy. But this is different because this one is actually for a change coming from the working class perspective rather than you know more of a, a mid, middle class perspective looking 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 up or looking down this is what this is the sort of humor that working class uh, people would come up with and the sort of things that they uh, find funny and um it's politically incorrect uh created by the bbc but i i don't think it's uh it was uh, 2007, but 
but it doesn't seem to be a program that they're, they're very proud of creating um, because it sort of disappeared and you don't hear that much about it anymore. But I uh, find it really funny and I recognise so many of the characters in this, in this as if they're real people out there on the street and you could meet them anywhere. Uh, once again, we have another type of comedy, which I would say is quite misanthropic. Um, you've got to hate people in a sense. They've got to really get on your nerves for you to create some of the ideas in these uh, sketches. You've got to think they're stupid or, or see all of their um, all of their faults in order to come up with this. And in terms of um, the two comedians, the two actors, um, they're just they're just such likable likable guys i would say uh harry enfield is like really amazing range as an actor doing all the different impressions playing different people and um paul whitehouse is amazing at doing every single accent you can imagine um yeah you if you watch this you definitely won't get all of it um, I, I watch this and I don't even get all of it because some of the sketches I'm imagining are based on things they saw when they they were growing up, black and white films and that sort of thing. But most of the sketches are quite short. So if there's something that you don't find funny, it, you know, it's seen, it, it's seen over and you're watching a different sketch. Um, yes. So if you would like, the main thing I'd say about that is that, that will speak to you more if you understand understand the working class or you know working class people so i am going to end that there um let me know in the comments if you've seen any of these british comedies or um you can even make some recommendations for some other ones uh you you think i should watch Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again soon. Bye.